you're going to probably you're going to die lonely. Or to be more precise, you're going to die lonely. A recent extensive study from the University of York comprehensively evidenced that people living in social isolation are more likely to experience chronic and terminal med medical conditions. The experience of loneliness makes us more susceptible to death. The same study identified that dance activities are one of the best ways to socialize and stave off such conditions. An early death is not the only problem that emerges from social isolation. Study after study indicate the impact of social alienation on health, security, education, and the economy. Social alienation in school leads to low engagement with learning, leads to low achievement. Social alienation in society leads to crime, terrorism, and suicide. Social alienation within workplaces leads to low productivity and low employability. Alternatively, individuals who can effectively communicate, collaborate, and collectively innovate are the most sought after within employment markets. So what does all of this have to do with re my research in dance studies? Today I'm going to illustrate this in association with three words. Community, creativity, and refuge. My research focuses on dance and how the creative moving body can foster a sense of belonging. Social interaction can be intimidating. Who has not felt uncomfortable the first time they enter a classroom, a playground, a workplace, a prison, a retirement home, a refugee camp, a new country, a cocktail party, <laughs> an academic symposium? I know that um, I've felt intimidated, and so that's why I research it. So how does one gain a sense of belonging and acceptance? For some, it will be through words, listening and talking. For many, however, words, languages, discourses, will be the intimidating block that is causing the discomfort and sense of dislocation. Dance is not the only alternative to words, but it is one. It's one that I practice, and so I research through it. Dance can help us to feel comfortable in our own bodies, feel comfortable surrounded by other bodies, feel comfortable with ideas, feel comfortable with our physical environments. My dance research focuses on how dance can foster community, creativity, and refuge. Dance can allow us to commune. Through dancing, we can negotiate the norms and distinctions that help identify and reinforce a sense of community. Dance can allow us to feel creative. Through dancing, we can generate and contribute to culture within such a community, feel a sense of agency, and not simply replicate culture. Dance can provide a refuge. Through dancing, individuals can gain a sense of inclusion amongst others, a sense that they belong and that their presence is valued. Research that I've been involved in has evidenced that dance practices can foster both social inclusion and social exclusion. It has shown that dance education has empowered learners and demeaned learners. Dance has connected people to their bodies and others and further alienated people from others and their bodies. The world is full of people with good intentions. Artists, educators, community activists, social workers, business leaders, healthcare professionals, security professionals, who want to use dance to support people and society. Their practices do not always achieve those good intentions, however. Often it is because they do not recognize the complexity of those good intentions. So I work with researchers that are investigating these practices. They are asking how questions, like how might a dance class help an elderly woman stave off Alzheimer's? How might a dance production help a young refugee to feel a sense of future in a strange land? How might a dance workshop bring a group of employees into a more cooperative sense of mind? How might Dance inside a curriculum help a teenage boy feel that he is valued at school. How might a dance session allow a young woman in prison to value her body and sustain a sense of self-worth? How might a dance activity allow a child with autism to communicate? Through partnerships with researchers in education, social work, 
Maori studies, Pacific studies, health and medical sciences, and business and economics. This research is releasing possibilities that cannot simply be achieved through medication, legislation, strategic direction, formal education, verbal mediation, or economic repatriation. I spent eight years living in the West Bank and Gaza Strip, investigating how dance may support traumatized communities there. But I also recognize that we may need very different approaches for other communities, traumatized by political, environmental, or economic upheavals. Through the Arts Equal Project in Finland, I'm currently working with Scandinavian researchers addressing the refugee crisis in Europe. This dance research recognizes how different we all are and seeks more nuanced and responsive approaches to how we use dance to address issues of social inclusion. My research involves ethnographic uh, studies. Through the Talking Dance book series that I'm co-authoring with Associate Professor Ralph Bach and Dr. Rosemary Martin, I seek marginalized voices. This book series challenges dominant national, patriarchal, and colonial um, narratives that regarding the role and function of dance in places like the Middle East, Asia, the Pacific, and Eastern Europe. My research also involves creative practice interventions in the form of community-based dance filmmaking. My current research project is a film entitled Five Cities, Five Senses. It's created with community-based organizations in Laos, Palestine, Italy, Australia, and Fiji. It seeks to collectively reimagine urban landscapes in these places. This is an image from that film. So my research places the body, the moving body, the creative moving body, at the center of broader socio-political issues. So how does this relate to you? You did not all arrive here today by attaching your brains to some standard technological interface. Your very different bodies brought you into this room. And to get here today, to reach this room, your body has been central to thousands of decisions. Your body has brought you information and intuitions. Your body has improvised ideas, identified possibilities, and avoided problems. Through your bodies, you have experienced creation, communication, reflection, and inspiration. When we consider this, it does not seem so surprising that research into the creatively moving body can be interlinked with so many other disciplines and research directions. Thank you.